Okay, so for today's video, I'm going to be making a skid plate for my TS200R, a two-stroke road trail. It's not necessarily to serve as a skid plate as such, but just something to prevent rocks and things from flicking up from the front wheel and hitting the case halves of the engine. Don't stress about the uh, case bolts hanging out everywhere. They're supposed to be. I'm currently waiting on parts to fix some major grinding issues. The inspiration for making the skid plate for this bike comes from my XR400. My XR400 has a thick aluminium skid or bash plate on it already. As I ride that around, I'm constantly hearing really loud banging noises from things bouncing off of it. Though I think that bike may just enjoy digging up and throwing rocks, both at itself and other people. But I figure, better safe than sorry, so I'll just make something uh, quick for this. Not sure how elaborate I'm going to make this skid plate yet. But I've got some cardboard and some scissors, so just going to do a bit of a cut and pasting activity and see how far we get. Okay, so as you can see there's a hole for where the uh, oil drain plug uh, can be accessed and some clearancing for the little bracket that holds the exhaust. I did experiment with uh, little flares off the side uh, just to cover the side of the engine a little bit but I think for now I'm just going to keep it simple so I can get the bike uh, running and riding and get everything working properly and then I'll worry about adding on bits because for now I'm just going to worry about the bare essentials. This is probably why my right boot doesn't have half of its shoelace. Well, I'm not quite sure if I want to cut the bash plate shorter so it fits lush against the smaller part of the frame or if I should continue it like it is onto that uh, larger cross section where the foot pegs go. Cosmetically it would look better up against the smaller part of the frame but it's probably better here because if I ever need to actually skid on something it's less likely to get caught up. Well I've decided for now I'll just bend it. So what I think I'm going to do for a mounting solution, come off of that engine mount point there uh, where that nut comes through the frame, I'll just add a couple of little metal tabs on both sides of the bash plate and then it'll just hold it in the middle. 
I don't see how that could cause an issue. Normally uh, bash plates have at least four mounting points, but I'm not going to be hitting the bash plate right at the top because that's where the exhaust hangs. So if I'm hitting that part of the frame, my exhaust is probably already turned into a pancake. And the rest of the way, the bash plate's going to be pressed up against the frame, so there shouldn't be any flapping going on. I guess if I was to skid the bike backwards over something, it would try and fold the bash plate down. Uh, but if that does become an issue, I'll just cut the uh, bash plate at this lump here, and then it'll be recessed into the shape of the frame, and there won't be a way to catch it. So I think that's enough justification, I'm just going to get it done now. Okay, so these brackets, the bottom side is going to be uh, smooth and flat, and the uh, they're going to be welded on the top. Okay, so for one last step, I'm going to put this in the sandblaster, just to get off all the dirt and the paint pen and, and all the spray from the welder. I also find that paint sticks better to a sandblasted surface, helps the uh, adhesion a bit, so in the blaster it goes. Okay, so into the woodshed of painting. I have been over it with degreaser as well, so there shouldn't be any contaminants. Okay, so unfortunately I'm running out of light, but this is what it looks like mocked up. Nothing special, but I think it will do the job. The exhaust wraps around the top here, so you won't see this part. One last thing I am going to do though is cut off some strips of rubber from an old tractor tube and put some, say, 15 to 20 mil strips just along where it contacts the frame. Hopefully this will preserve the paint a little bit so I don't end up with rust. And it should also reduce any noise if there's some vibration and contact going on. Well I was going to use contact adhesive to stick all the uh, rubber bits on in the contact areas but instead I'm going to use super glue because it makes less mess if uh, one's ripped off and I have to reapply it. Uh, it's easy to clean up, dries quicker so I don't have to clamp anything down. Now one thing I want to test out is it might be more resistant to hydrocarbons because I think the contact adhesive I have is based on hydrocarbon, so I guess uh, they would be able to attack it uh, when the two stroke oil gets into everything. And well, it just takes less time to apply.
Now I was going to double check these, but I'm just going to wing it. Okay, so I put a little bit of grease on the bolt just so it doesn't uh, rust and corrode inside the aluminium engine case as well as everything else and seize. So it should be easy to remove in the future. Not on the threads, obviously. Looks like with the, uh, the additional space the rubber takes up, it's going to be harder to line up bolt holes. Nothing a bit of this can't fix. It only took a few screwdrivers, a trolley jack, plastic hammer, C-clamp. I don't think I galled the paint. It's going to get a lot more gold though when I start throwing rocks at it with the front wheel. I don't think anything's going to get through that. One unfortunate thing is after adding the rubber, we seem to have gained some clearance. I think I'll try and fix this some other time at the moment. It's getting a bit late. When the parts arrive so I can fix what's going on in here, I'll put the exhaust and everything back on and we'll get a look at what the bike looks like with the complete system installed. I think as is it looks pretty good. 